some challenges come for the destinies to be aborted. That sickness can come and you end up taking your, do your child to the witch doctor. Barrenness can come and you end up committing yourself into the demonic altar. The same womb that God would have blessed to bring out a children destined for greatness, the devil hijacks the same womb and puts something else that will corrupt the seed that will conceive and then it will cause something to begin to happen. I remember I was praying for a couple for some years now uh, when, since I dealt with that case. Uh, they were born again and they knew God. And when they, they were born again, but they experienced a challenge of not having children. Their faith was not very strong before God. They waited for some years and they could not get a child. They prayed, nothing happened. But they knew there is a powerful witch doctor uh, whose peop who people were uh, praising a lot in that area. And they took, they took themselves there. And when they went there, they were prayed for or they were initiated by that man. They gave some sacrifices. And finally, after one year, the woman conceived and she was able to bear a son. And then uh, from there, they repented. And they saw this is not good. They never said they went to the witch doctor. They had just seen the church. And they, 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 <laughs> they, 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 want, they could, as they continued to pray, and God broke that uh, spell of barrenness, and they started having other children. The funny thing is that other children became so good. The one they got from the witch doctor, by the time he was in class seven, he was stoning them. He would go out, take his stones, and begin to beat their father and mother in the house. And it was embarrassing every time. He could not obey. So every time they would look, they know this is uh, what the, you got from the witch doctor. And uh, it's the same womb, but was perverted. The devil has no power to create. He just perverts. He just manipulates what has already been given there. So uh, that day when I came and taught the spiritual foundation and how you can easily separate yourself. That they came, they came to me and they were giving me that testimony of the son so that we pray and deliver him from those forces of darkness. So there are some people who have been hijacked. You are brought into that kind of environment. Sometimes you can be uh, subjected to those kind of things so that they can sabotage your destiny. I pray that nothing will deny you a, a God-given destiny. And if you have heard me, say amen. So devil can use all those kind of things. He can bring those kind of manipulations to control your life. He want to make you poor. He want to make you barren. He want to make you uh, 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 become weak so that he can easily control your life. And I decree every error in your life is hereby rectified in Jesus' name. He came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. And I pray that there shall be a turnaround. The devil want to use you. That is also another reason. He want to use you to fulfill his agenda. You are strong. So he want to use you. He and I jacked Saul. Saul was very powerful and influential. So he could uh, propagate the kingdom of darkness. So the devil would like to change you so that he can use you in his kingdom. To father his agendas. Because he knows you have the potential. So he manipulates the destiny. You see the most people that you see. The thieves. I want to, to, you to understand. Most of the thieves. Most of the, uh, the people who have, uh, were criminals. And they were doing a lot of things. They were murdering. Others were doing that. Today most of them. Through the prison. They are mighty preachers. Moving around and turning around lives. They, were, they went there. When they were arrested. They were tuned into the right life. And when they came out of the prison, they were already men of God. So the devil knew these are mighty people. That is why he did that. Most of the prostitutes, even we have seen the Bible, like Rahab, she was powerful. The Samaritan woman was so powerful. But the devil was using her to father his own agenda. So there are people who are mighty and being used to father their agenda. Paul was fathering the agenda of the devil. And he was doing it. Even when Stephen was being killed, Saul was guarding the, the clothes of the people who were stoning him. And he was there. And he could not understand why these people were escaped and they have left Jerusalem without all of them being killed. So Paul was being used by the devil mightily. 
He was pursuing some agendas and thinking that he is doing the things that he is supposed to do. When the life is exchanged, you pursue the wrong life thinking it is the good one. So when Paul was trying to stop the disciples of Jesus from preaching the gospel, he thought he was doing very good thing by defending his father's religion. So he was doing the best. But God had an agenda for him. So the devil will also hijack people who are strong, manipulate them so that they can further their his agenda. That's why you look when you see some people that are very influential in the kingdom of darkness. They are very influential. When they are converted, they are very influential in the kingdom of God. They are very influential because they are, they carry something. There is something the devil traced in their lives, and that is why he wanted them. So the devil does not want you to serve God's agenda. He wants you to serve his agenda. He does not want you to fulfill God's purpose. He wants you to fulfill his purpose. And I declare in the name of Jesus, whoever has been captured by the devil to further his agenda, even in our nation, I rebuke that and I decree that boat is broken by the anointing of Jesus Christ in Jesus' mighty name. That you are separated and you are destroyed uh, 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 from this nation, uh, you forces of darkness, you evil, you killers of destiny and potentials. I declare you have no authority in the name of Jesus. The real battle is in the mind. The real battle is in the mind. You can see all these things. The devil is able to twist your mind and change you, change the way you think. Then he has destroyed you. That's why I said, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. The real change, the real battle is in the mind. It's in the mind, the way you are thinking, the way you are operating. That is the mind. You must win this battle to fulfill all what God has planned for your life. If you cannot win the battle of the mind, you will not fulfill. Those are the strong, the wrong thinking pattern. Now, the enemy will continually try and get you out of focus. Out of fo focus in the things of God and focus in his agenda. Out of focus of your future and focus on your past. Out of focus on your strength and focus on your weakness. Out of focus on your happy times and the great testimony that you have. And then focus on your disappointment and the things that you have failed. Any time you meet yourself, you are focusing on what you have failed and not what you have achieved. You are focusing on what the disappointment and frustrations, not the what you are able to do. It's because the devil now is engaging your mind so that he can defeat you. There are some people who have achieved a lot. But they don't see what they have achieved. What they see is where they failed. What they see is what they, 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 they have not been able to do. And they have accomplished a lot. Disappointment, failures, the past. And you are now able to, to remain focused there. When you remain like that, you be, begin now losing the focus. The focus of the, the life that is at the end of you. And what happened to you? You will become disobedient disobedient to the to the heavenly call uh, and this is when now we reject faith when we are able to look at those things we reject faith because now we look at disappointment we regard the failures where we are supposed to be what things we are supposed to achieve and finally we become people who have lost faith and we begin to pursue things and run naturally and aimlessly like people who do not have a direction. So when Paul was speaking to King Agrippa, he was to bring Agrippa into the right time, timing of his ministry, how it came through revelation, and why these people are accusing him. And he had the opportunity to speak to him and tell him what God is, uh, or God is doing through his life. And Paul says, God appeared to him and said, I have appeared to you for this purpose when he saw the vision. So God had a plan. He had a plan. And he was able to convert him from the wrong life into the right life. He was serving in the right, wrong life with a lot of passion, with a lot of commitment. That's why when disciples moved, he wanted to move to make sure that they are 
stop. So he, God, rose up to him and said, uh, uh, Arise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose. So God has a plan, and a unique one to every person. No one would have thought that Paul, God had planned that he is the one who wrote the gospel to the Gentiles. Nobody would have imagined that. Something you don't think, but God has thought about it. Something you have never imagined, it has never come into your mind, but it has come to the mind of God. So God sometimes can lift you and begin to use you for something that you never imagined you can become. All my life, all what I grew, all what I was preparing myself to become, I never prepared myself to become a preacher. I never thought I would own a microphone and preach. I never knew that in my entire life. But God and a plan. God and a plan. So God tells him, I have appeared to you for this purpose. For this purpose. To make you a minister. So he was not. So when God is taking you to your rightful destiny, he makes you what you are not. What did Jesus tell Peter? Follow me. I shall make you what? A fisher of men. He made you. God calls and makes. So when you follow him, you become. You don't start. Paul was not a minister. But he was made. Peter was not a fisher of men. But he was made. You are not what you want to be. But you can be made. God can make you. And God can make you be what he wants. He wants you to be. Therefore today. Now, before I wind up, I'm asking, are you in the line with a plan and his purpose? Do you know why he appeared you for? Because once you are born again and you get a revelation, there is something that God wants you to achieve. Is fear keeping you away? Is your past life keeping you away? Is the way you were created keeping you away? Is ignorance the one that has shut you down? Is the devil manipulating you and has deceived you and has changed your destiny? And then you believe there is nothing that can come out of your life. You need to arise above all this. And begin to know that you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. That you can make it. You can become that which God made you to become or created you to be. Who is the maker? Jesus. And what you do need to do is not your potential that he is looking for. He is looking for your availability to give you potential. He is looking for you to be available that he can give you that strength. Saul availed himself and God named him a minister. I say, I have appeared to you to make you a minister and a witness both of the things which you have seen and of the things which I was yet revealed to you. That is why he walked with a lot of knowledge. God promised him the spirit of revelation. The things that he has seen. And the things which I will deliver you from the Jewish people. As well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you. So immediately his call is directed to the Gentiles. In a time Paul tried to win the Jews in his ministry. Most of the crises were not caused by Gentiles. They were caused by Jews. Because it was not called to Jews. Some people cause problems to your life. They are not called. You are not called to them. The people that you are called to, they love you. So don't force yourself on what you are not called. Know your calling. Know your direction. To open the eyes. So the, these people were blind. So he wanted them to eyes to be open. In order to turn them from darkness to light. That was his ministry, to open the eyes. That is why God had to make him blind. So that he would understand the needs of eyes to be open. To experience that. Some things that God wants you to do to people, God allows you to go through it. So, he will make you 
go through some ways for excuses. So he was blind. And you know how his eyes were open? Physically. So he opened the spiritual eyes so that they turned from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance among those who are sanctified. And then he's saying, I never wanted to be disobedient to the heavenly calling of heavenly vision. The call gave me the vision. So I never wanted to be disobedient. So there are so many things, this way I will say tomorrow, that it makes you to be disobedient to the heavenly vision. You doubt it and you don't pursue it. If you don't pursue it, it will never be realized. So you have to pursue it. And most of us have gone through those things that I have shown you that they have become disobedient to the heavenly vision. When we look at the Bible, again, we see the journey, missionary journey of Paul in Acts 13, when he was in the church, when he was meeting with Elimas by Jesus. On Sunday, I was talking about that, and we went and discussion with my wife after that. Saul, who was, uh, became Paul, made Elimas blind. So that he stopped perverting the ways of justice. So he made him experience what he experienced. No seeing light. And it was. He was called to open eyes of others to turn. But this one is stopping the people from turning. He made him blind. And it was very nice to exercise the ministry of what he went through. So sometimes what you have gone through. You can make people overcome it. Or you can make them be like that. Because you have been out of it, if it is God who made you to go through it. So these people were meant, or Paul was meant to understand who he is sent to by God. I want to pray that you rise up and say, I am not going to be ordinary in my generation. I am going to fulfill no matter what I am experiencing now. I am going to fulfill God-given destiny. Because you have it. Before the foundation of the world was laid, God gave you destiny. You will overcome all those things that we have talked about that are hindrance and they can rob you. God can give you, but this one can rob you. And say, I will not be robbed.